Part of the behavioral representation set, the activity diagram unambiguously represents the flow of control through the sequencing of activities and constructs. It also represents the data interactions overlaid to present a more complete picture. The activity diagram is available for entities in the function class, as well as any other subclasses of processing unit. It is, along with the Enhanced Functional Flow Block Diagram, or EFFBD, the most complete representation of behavior. Activity diagrams in EFFBDs are very similar, which is not a coincidence. Not only do they work to address the same fundamental need, a more comprehensive representation of behavior, but the EFFBD notation was used for both guidance and verification by the SysML team during the development of the activity diagram. The result is closely coupled representations from which you can select to suit your analytical and communication needs. On the diagram, rounded rectangular nodes represent functions. The flow of control is top to bottom by default, but that can be changed to a horizontal flow by selecting the drop-down below the Layout option in the Diagram tab of the ribbon. We recommend changing your flow direction before moving and editing your diagram to avoid manual repositioning of nodes. Diamonds and bars on the diagram represent control constructs, the building blocks of behavior. As a function completes execution, flow of control proceeds along the branch lines to the next activity or control construct. The black circle on the top edge of the diagram represents the last function to complete before this decomposition begins, the source of control flow. The double black circle on the bottom edge represents the next function to enable when this decomposition completes, the sink of control flow. Each control construct has a precise definition that prescribes how control will be passed within the construct and when the construct itself will end. There are a number of constructs that can be used, so let's go over them. The first construct is the parallel construct, which is also known as a concurrency or AND construct. The parallel node is followed by separate branches that rejoin and terminate at another matching parallel node. The construct designates that all branches execute concurrently and all branches must complete before execution can exit. The SELECT construct, also called an OR construct, designates a selection between a number of branches. The SELECT node is a diamond followed by separate branches that rejoin and terminate at another matching SELECT node. When the construct is encountered, a branch is selected and executed. Not all branches will execute, and the one selected must complete before execution continues. The selection probability of branches can be edited by selecting a branch, right-clicking, and selecting Edit Selection Probability. The loop construct consists of a pair of loop nodes, shown as diamonds, which enclose a branch and are connected with a loop back line. The branches of a loop can contain any number of functions and control constructs. These are executed repeatedly. The branch typically contains a loop exit construct to conditionally exit the loop. Without a loop exit, the loop construct will repeat endlessly. An iterate construct consists of a pair of nodes that enclose a branch and are connected by a loop back line. Everything between the iterate nodes will be executed in sequence the number of times defined by the domain set count attribute. The replicate construct is made up of a pair of nodes that enclose a main branch and are connected with a coordination branch. This construct is a shorthand notation for identical processes that operate in parallel. 
An exit node can be placed anywhere in the flow of control to indicate that this function has come to completion. From here, the control will move to the double black circle at the end of the diagram. A function can have multiple exit paths that come from the function itself. These are exit conditions. This is similar to a function followed by a select construct, but the function controls which path is taken. The branch construct allows you to add a branch to an existing parallel or select construct. Branches can be arranged into your preferred order by using the context menu. Simply right click on the branch and select edit branch position. Where a function has a decomposition specifying greater detail, a pitch fork in the corner of the node is present. Like the EFFBD, the activity diagram shows both control and data aspects of behavior. There are two kinds of data that can be shown. Activity diagrams always show triggers, items that control the execution by their presence or absence. Triggers are drawn as rectangles with a standard arrow to the function with no additional decoration. The other item type, data stores, are input to or output from a function with no control implications. These are drawn as rectangles with a standard arrow but also have a label decoration indicating optional at the point of connection with the function. Activity diagrams will show data stores by default. If you don't want to show them, you can turn data stores off on the diagram by unchecking the Show Data Stores option in the Properties tab of the toolbox. Boundary items, items that are used outside the scope of this activity, can be constrained to the edge of the diagram. This allows a differentiation between local items and items used elsewhere in the system. This option is set in the Properties tab of the toolbox. For more information and resources on Genesis, please visit our website or contact our support team. Mm -hmm.